Hello again. Uh, it's a small project in the suburb of Shiraz, uh, and my client is an urban planner, and uh, he wants a house for a permanent residence of he, his and his children. Um, architecture in Iran's harsh geography means making desert habitable. This is a representation of Persian garden, recreation and gathering in a green space. As a man-made oasis, such a scarce and hard to achieve product, it's called a piece of paradise on the earth in Persian. <coughs> In urban fabric, each house wants to spread itself to embrace the nature, defining a bold boundary in its relation with the exterior, with a green void in the middle. This type is called introverse. On the contrary, the main building in the Persian garden called Kushk is surrounded by nature. Being extrovert in response to desire for maximum connectivity. Although our uh, contemporary cities are developing with completely different morphology, yet the house in the garden as a suburban home still had its appeal. By increasing value of real estates, many of them have a, a tragic ending. Uh, because of the uh, price, they divide it and sell it, so the garden uh, will destroy it. Uh, but uh, our project, the project commissioned to us located in one of these gardens in Guyom, suburb of Shiraz in central Iran. There was a solid intention to preserve the garden as a permanent residence through generations. I want, I want it to remain my legacy, the client said. The challenge was how to achieve maximum connectivity with a garden like a kushk while pre preserving certain levels of privacy like a house. We had experimented, we have experimented this uh, spatial potential of uh, these dichotomies sometimes by embodiment of two characters in one building and sometimes by placing the two typologies side by side. In this case, we tried these two spatial approaches in two sectional levels. History of Iranian architecture is about extracting vast variation out of a simple structural logic of load-bearing, brick curves and ribs that build up on each other. Uh, called the ribs in Iranian, tavize. Uh, we exhausted this We exhausted this structural logic in our own way with steel and married it with contemporary paradigms of a space production. As a result, we arrived at an alternative of carrying a structural load of a cube. Three introvert half domes sit structurally on the top of three extrovert half domes. By placing private spaces on the upper level and public spaces on the lower level, we try to integrate form, structure, and program.
a synchronization of embracing the nature and being embraced by nature. The public spaces flow in and in between the domes, and each area finds it in own characters, its own character. The rooms are formed through localized inflation of the floor, making a spatial geography. And each point in the space, depending on its distance and the kind of relationship to the domes, get different spatial values. In upper level, in private space under the merged dome is a different experience, more dense and compact. The central courtyard located between the rooms create a private interiority, which is located in the middle of the garden itself. In other words, the direction of inflated surface to our center or edges make them suitable for private or public activities. In order to reach thermal comfort, Kushk organization ha has its own architectural solution for passive conditioning. The courtyard and the geometrical formation of the project let us re-experiment these solutions. We, have, we had experienced using a straw shader proposing a more flexible solution to control the sunlight. The consequence was a distinct expression in this project. This form structure has its own suggestions for a space occupation. In such amalgamation of form, space, and structure, we can't rely on 3D models and visualization only. We simply use big models to experiment with materiality, construction techniques, enclosures, and orientations. Here you can crawl inside and body can engage with the space. Of course, a better understanding of project was achieved with the cost of minor damage of, uh, to client's head but he was when he was examining the project. In continuation, of historic relation between the building and surrounding, the project is an exploration to achieve integration between dichotomies like private and public, introvert and extrovert, artificial and natural, and also between solidity and transparency. Thank you very much. Thank you. Paul. Gosh, um, <laughs> <laughs> gosh, it, it reminds me of Johnson actually, and, and, and that that house in many sense. But so much of this place, which is what I like about it, it's contemporary architecture taken to and embedded in and made of of this place. I suppose I'm going to go straight back to um, uh, Karen Schmutz's question asked of you the last time you came here, and congratulations for being here twice, and and that is. Um, what happens when you put the satellite dishes on it? Well, I'll invert that and say, what happens when you put furniture in it? How do you feel about this place being lived in? Uh, we design every furniture and... Uh, this courtyard, yeah. you can put everything there. Dishes, yeah. everything you want. And uh, no, it's, uh, it's not uh, um, harmful for the figure yeah. and... I think I, I feel I could live there and leave a mess of books and bits and pieces, and it's all strong enough to carry the lot. <laughs> Karen, okay, can you give us a sense of the scale? I'm a little bit lost. How big is the the platform? 
It's 20 meters. Square. No, it looks rectangular. No, 20, 20. Okay. 20, 20. It's, big. it's big. It's big. It's big, yes. Yeah. Okay. I think I just want to comment on what I enjoy about it is this historic and contemporary because it is a real challenge in architecture and we're all trying to grapple with this idea of how do we bring culture into, into contemporary architecture. And yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I would like to see it with the, maybe it's a very uh, controlled person who's going to live in there, but most people I, we know in our projects is that we design beautiful things and then the minute they move in with their furniture and their books and their boxes, it looks very different. But thank you. Christine. Thank you very much for um, an absolutely intriguing presentation of yet another very sculptural scheme. And I think what I um, also enjoyed was the way that you described the historic origins of the structure and how you integrated, if you like, the use of local material and local building practice uh, into a design which is resolutely contemporary, which I think is brilliant. Um, I, I'm not so worried about people bringing stuff in here because I think it is such a beautiful and in a way dominant form itself that everything else will become completely subsidiary. So I wouldn't mind if there were kids in there leaving their toys around. But what I would actually ask is that on your plans your garden looks highly uh, planted and vegetated it looks as if there's lots of trees there but actually in the um, the view it's really quite sort of arid stony ground what exactly will the views be because you talk at the outset that the connection to the garden the visual connection to the garden is of paramount importance and I just want to know whether there is some sort of idyllic notion of the garden as you showed in the earlier example, which is the garden of paradise where there's obviously an artificial oasis and the reality, which is actually, it's very, very barren. So what will it be? I mean, will it be the artificial oasis which is highly planted, which they will just become consumed by or will it be, you know, looking out onto the harsh reality of quite stony ground, quite arid ground? The nature is stony, but it will be a man-made garden, you know, full of trees. They want to be in this way. We just uh, render it for the... Um, we can read the... Uh, we can read the volumes, you know? Uh, and another thing um, for, about my client that uh, they had a very big mansion uh, before, but sell it, you know? And uh, he wants to, um, to uh, have legacy of this project for the generation. And it's a, it's a, um, it's a religious term that you can uh, sign that uh, if uh, this house will be for the children, but they can't sell it, you know? Uh, and uh, because of that, uh, also our uh, domes, previous domes were very dominant and uh, structure, very thick walls and very uh, strong wallows. Uh, so uh, we agreed that he liked this project and is going to build it. You know? And it will be permanent. It's not a second home. It will be a permanent home uh, for him. And uh, also, my friend helps me, that <laughs> Iranian architecture uh, is very adaptive with furniture. You can do it, uh, ev you can uh, install every furniture you want in the, this uh, space. I just ask, ask like, one final question about the rationale for the choice of materials and the relationship between structure. Because you talked about 
the idea of um, developing geometries from traditional forms. Um, and you've chosen a steel frame to yes. clad with brick to, to achieve these very sensuous curved forms. But I just wondered why, why particularly that structural system when you could have used concrete to achieve the same sort of effects. And so how does that work? And what were the, what were the, what was the rationale behind that? Uh, because of the uh, Iranian uh, earthquake, we, we have uh, in, in the very bad situation about earthquake, uh, it is the logic of the uh, loads. Uh, so we, we, we could, uh, we, we have two uh, direction we can we we could use uh, all shears in concrete mm -hmm. and not linear. Uh, we we could do that, uh, but uh, I thought that it's uh, it's good that we do these elements with the steel, mm -hmm. and uh, in the tradition uh, they fill the uh, the ribs, the brick ribs with. Uh, bricks, you right. know. Uh, I think that it's a good idea. I, do, I did, didn't like that a sheer um, a sheer beton, and after that I put brick in into that. You know, uh, I I thought that it's good that work together the steels and the uh, filling part with bricks. Because of that, I choose this kind of. Yeah. Uh, and another thing, it's very more exact because they they can uh, do it very um, because it's it's not near Tehran and uh, I, I can supervise it uh, it should be very uh, uh, very exact uh, we can uh, do it in uh, some um, factory so and and install it in this oh, I site. see. So you can build it prefabricated and bring it yes, to site, and yes, then yes, yes, yes. It's more accurate. Not uh, not in Tehran, in the Shiraz, yeah. but because they have the exact geometry in plans, they can do it. it, it this too was the reason that I goes. I went this way. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That's thank a great you. way to end the morning. Thank, thank you. you.